Hey guys, so this week I've been playing a Resident Evil game. Oh, Operation Raccoon City. Uh, I'm a big fan of Resident Evil way back since uh, I watched my friend Ricky play through uh, Resident Evil 2. And I was like, oh, I gotta get that, I gotta get that. But I didn't, I got Resident Evil 3 instead to one-up him. I actually even got this shirt, you can see. Oh, Resident Evil 3. Uh, it's, of course, it's all faded and uh, stretched out from when I was really, really fat. Uh, as opposed to now when I'm only just kind of fat. Anyways, uh, Resident Evil, it's a game. It's a... Uh, but it's not the actual, like, sort of timeline, it's a uh, prequel, cool. not really, I don't know, a squad base shooter? Is it any good? Well, here's my opinion of Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City is kind of in a weird place because it's a Resident Evil game that is not a survival horror shooter that's actually sort of a prequel but not really because it doesn't really involve the other characters and it's a squad based shooter. The game takes place in arguably the most popular time frame in the Resident Evil franchise and that's the era of Raccoon City in between Resident Evil 2 and 3. You play as the Umbrella Security Services, which is the corporation Umbrella's like secret military arm, and you were basically involved in everything that happened in the span of those two games, Resident Evil 2 and 3. Essentially, this gives you a really unique look at the events of Raccoon City. You're actually the Umbrella side of things, so you see how everything happened, how everything played out, why things got so screwed up, and all that stuff. It also gives them a fantastic opportunity to fill this game with as much fan service as they can think of by putting every character that you want to see in a Resident Evil game but can't because they've all moved on into this game. You want Leon? He's there. You want Claire? She's there. Nikolai? Ada? They're all there. It's really cool that they explore the events of Raccoon City and shed some light on some things and you get to experience things from a different angle, but I see a lot of rumblings about this game. All over the internet, I keep hearing about how they're ruining all the cannons in the game, or they, they screwed up with the cannons in the old games, or they changed some cannons, which is weird because I don't remember any cannons in Resident Evil. Well, except Resident Evil 3 had that rail cannon, but that's not even in the game, so I don't understand how they could ruin that cannon. All joking aside, the game seems to want to be sort of in this middle ground where it wants to be related to all the lore and all the stuff that happened in Resident Evil 2 and 3, but also wants to kind of change things. I don't want to spoil anything, but there is a moment in the game where you're clearly like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that person didn't die in Resident Evil 2. I like to think of the game as more of this alternate reality sort of just kind of a fun game instead of directly related to the Resident Evil series and everything has to be taken seriously. In terms of the actual gameplay, it's a pretty standard third-person shooter where you and three AI squad mates or three actual people go up against hordes of zombies and also sometimes humans. The shooting is alright, the choice in weapons is alright, overall it's pretty alright. Although sticking with the survival horror elements from Resident Evil, it seems like you never have enough ammo, which sucks, and you have a health bar that you have to keep full with either medical spray or green herbs, which is great, except, you know, when there aren't any around, so you just kind of like, oh hey, I think a zombie looked at me, Blark dead. Also, your squad mates, when they're AI and not real people, are incredibly stupid and can't seem to shoot anything. A number of times in the game I've gotten completely stuck and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I'm standing by a door that I'm supposed to open, but there doesn't seem to be a way to go to open it. Also, the game has a real problem with pacing, because you'll go through a big fight and you're like, oh, I killed all those zombies and I killed all those bad guys. Well, hey, look, now that I'm out of ammo, let's throw all this crap at you. Overall, the single player is just kind of... Bleh, you know, it's it's not terrible, it's not great, it just kind of is. It's a little more fun when you play with people, but playing by your own is uh, not so much fun. Besides the single player mission, the game also comes with multiplayer, which is pretty standard multiplayer matches, but themed with the Resident Evil sort of paintbrush. Instead of having your standard sort of capture the flag, you have Biohazard, where you guys have to fight over a canister of, you know, virus and then take back to your base. Instead of your sort of standard team deathmatch, they have this cool mode called Heroes, where everybody gets to pick a hero from the series, like Leon or Ada or whatever, and you fight, and uh, the objective is to kill the other people. And when you kill one of those heroes, that hero is gone, and you can't pick them anymore, but you can respawn as one of the sort of random people. And you just kind of keep going until one side has killed all the heroes of the other side. Obviously, there's nothing cooler than playing the Resident Evil 3 version of Jill, but it seems like the Umbrella side has, like, it has Nikolai, which whatever, and it has Ada, but the rest are, like, hunk and then just some random dude that I've never heard of, but, you know, I'm not a super freak for Resident Evil. The multiplayer, like the single player, you know, is alright, the shooting works pretty well, but what's really interesting is that while you have these objectives and you're facing off against people, you also still have to face off the hordes and various B.O.W.s. 
So you'll be running around trying to put that last bullet in Leon Kennedy, thinking, ha, we're gonna win this, and then a, a hunter shows up out of nowhere and just stomps your face in. I like the idea of fighting an opposing force while these neutral zombies are just fighting everybody. You can use that to adva your advantage. You can use some of your you know, character's abilities to get the zombies to attack them instead of attacking you, and it's, it's kind of fun. As a game, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City is... it's alright. You know, it's a lot more fun when you're playing with people. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, Resident Evil Outbreak, which is probably one of my favorite Resident Evil games, even though it's not the best. I know that. But it's not quite as good as Outbreak was, uh, and it's it's only kind of in this sort of pseudo link to reality, but not really. Overall, it's fun, but kind of forgettable. I don't think a lot of people are going to be playing this for a long time, and uh, I think it just kind of wets your whistle for what Resident Evil 6 might be.